It is our victory and the blood of Jesus washes us. We are thankful for that blood. That blood that shall never lose its power. That blood that has given us the victory again and again. We are thankful this day for God our Father sending His only begotten Son to the world to die for us so that we can be redeemed. Today, the first Sunday in every month we will normally practice, as the Bible says, do as often as we can in remembrance of Him. We would make that time of prepare our communion and partake in reflection, remembering what was done on the cross of Calvary for us. Today, we are in a time and in a season where we need Jesus now more than ever. For the times that we are living in is, as Bible say, called perilous times. We are seeing and we are living in a season where many are in fear, but the God of our salvation is more than able. Bible tells us that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. And we stand in the soundness of our mind because we know the God of our salvation. We have relationship with the God that created the heavens and the earth. Sometimes you may take what we have for granted, but never take the God of your salvation for granted. So today, as you would stand in your home, don't be so comfortable to be seated and approach God's table anyhow. There must be sacrifices and there must be an order when we come to partake, as Paul was saying to the Corinthian church, and by extension, the body of Christ. We must understand that if we are hungry, we eat at home. If we have, a, you know, a ought against one another, we fix it before we partake of what is called the covenant meal or holy communion. So as you hold it in your hand, you must know that you cannot hold others in your heart in a negative way. You must know that God expects you to follow through in his, you know, principles with loving one another as Christ has even loved us loving our neighbor as ourselves, uh, doing that which is right, uh, giving the God of heaven uh, the, 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 the praise that is due unto his name, not sharing uh, you know, that altar space with anybody else, giving him first uh, preference in all things, making Jesus the center of it all. So today we want to lift the bread away from our hand. Father, we say thank you today. And we bless this way of this bread and we sanctify as the people were lifted in their very homes and spaces, we are declaring right now victories. Father, even as you have sent Jesus to that cross to die for us, Lord, that we can be redeemed and we can receive, Father, healing and deliverance. We are thankful. And as we partake today, we remember that we are more than overcomers, we are more than victorious, and you have given us the victory again and again. So therefore we bless and we sanctify this bread, and we thank you for the victory in Jesus' mighty name. Let us partake of the bread. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. As you lift the cup in your right hand, Reflect the cross. Reflect the cruelty that was done to Christ so that we can be saved. Reflect on Father God giving His only begotten Son so that you and I don't have to pay a death penalty. Jesus paid the death penalty so that we can have everlasting life with Him. Father, today we thank you for this wine which represents the blood which gives us the victory again and again. Today we bless and we sanctify it as we party in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give God the glory. Oh, the blood. Thank you. 
because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. We are victorious because of the blood of Jesus Christ and we are grateful uh, to be in the place of the mighty God. So today, whatever you are going through, let us go through with the mighty God. Uh, let him lead and we follow. Amen. Uh, for the God of our salvation, he does not know how to fail. Uh, whatever, fail whatever failures, trials, and tests you are going through, uh, I am here to encourage you that the God of your salvation of times and seasons, he has purpose under his hand. And when we trust and we obey, certainly we shall reap the fruits as we stay focused and we contend in the faith. You see, many a times when you are going through the pressures of life, you stop contending for the faith or in the faith. But the men, the apostles that went on before us, they continue to contend for the faith. Our brother Jude say to contend for the faith uh, because we have an old, uh, holy unction from above. Uh, and sometimes you have misplaced faith. Uh, you place it in people, you place it in things, and you forget that the God of your salvation uh, is the one that has given you a measure of faith. Uh, the faith that has been given to you is for you to exercise. Uh, now, if you are not in the Word, there is no faith really to exercise. Uh, because faith is basically the word and the word is faith uh, in that it is connected. Uh, so if you tell me you are having faith or you are in faith and you don't read or study the word, uh, it means you are miss. You are in faith, which is a miss. Uh, you are in prayer, which is a miss because you are not studying the word. Uh, you are not hearing the word uh, and you are not living the word. Uh, if you say you are in faith, because some people say I have great faith. Uh, yeah, but if you are not connected to the word, uh, that great faith uh, is not there because you have to know the word. You have to anchor yourself in the word. And it's only through faith, we, through, through faith in the word we can anchor ourselves because the word is alive and full of power. And this word will not die. This word will never die. This word is alive and full of power. The saints of God, we want to look into the Bible. The book of John, chapter 4. Amen. The book of John, chapter 4. And it's a familiar portion of scripture for the woman of the well.
for each individual, your experience with the Lord will be different. Some may be similar. But each individual will have a unique experience. This woman at the well, she was despised for her lifestyle. She was cast aside because she was of a mixed race. And the Jews and the Samaritans did not get along. And Jesus entering into the scene made a difference. And just like in our lives, on the day that we would have accepted him, we would have received salvation, it made a whole world of difference. Transformation took place. This woman physically coming into the presence of Jesus, or Jesus walking into her space, made a world of difference to this woman because uh, she had an opportunity now to live uh, a life that she could not live in the flesh uh, without sinning. Uh, she had an opportunity now to live a holy set apart life uh, where people would have put her down before because of the amount of men in her life. Uh, now she's encountering uh, the Holy One. Uh, she's encountering beauty from above. Uh, she's encountering living water and this living water is going to change her heart and her mind and her life forever. She had a unique experience. As I said, the Samaritans and the Jews, they did not mix. The Samaritans were hated race because uh, they will mix and even their God and how they serve. Uh, and child of God, uh, sometimes you may be going through life and you may feel hated. Uh, but I've got news for you. Uh, the God of your salvation and the Jesus that you say you serve, uh, he is more than able to keep you. He is more than able to protect you. Uh, and as you serve in spirit and in truth, uh, he will manifest in you and through you so that all can see. The moment this woman encountered Jesus, uh, it changed her life forever. The moment moment uh, she encountered the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, uh, there was a shift in her. Uh, how many of you ready for a shift in, in your home uh, that something has been going on uh, and you can't share with anybody? Uh, well, Jesus is coming into your space right now uh, to shift things around uh, and to yes. give you a victory. Uh, is if you are ready for the victory on this Sunday morning, uh, this is the time and the season uh, to awake, uh, to arise, uh, and to come forth in the name of Jesus. Jesus. You see, awaken is part of it, but it's not the fullness. And to arise because you can get awake or you can become awake and you're still in your bed. After being awake and you got to arise, you got to get up. And after you get up, you got to get moving. Hallelujah. And the spirit of the living God enables us to keep moving. Hallelujah. He guides us into all truth. This woman was guided from the time she made the connection. You ever make a connection Connection with somebody and it blows your mind in that it's like wow this person knows what they're about this person has impacted my life in a positive way you got to know the connections that you are making if they are unholy alliances you will be judged accordingly but the alliance that you make it should bring the blessing into your space and you should be a blessing to them as you walk into their space with Mary and Elizabeth we see where and they walk into each other's space. We saw the baby leap. There was a positive miss about that, the relationship. Even as Elizabeth was carrying John the Baptist and Mary was carrying our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, there was a connection even from in the womb, hallelujah. Even as John was to be the forerunner from the womb, hallelujah, we know that the baby was leaping as the Bible tells us. And Father God, he is true to his word. John, when he came forth, John was doing what he was called to do from the very inception. Are you doing what you are called to do? We are called and chosen of God by God to do his bidding. Whether it's a pandemic or whether it's another situation, we do not know after this pandemic what will be our fate. But we do know that we have the fate of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So we are not bowing down as people without hope. We are hopeful. Hallelujah. Our hope is in the Lord. Our trust is in the Lord. Our hope, our trust, and all that God has placed on the inside of us, our faith, our strength, our ability and capability, it is in the God of our salvation. So we are not going to faint. Amen. Amen.
Amen. We are not going to faint, live stream family. We thank God for you today that you took the time to tune in. We thank God for Lighthouse Empowerment Sanctuary. I trust God every member is tuned in. It's our Sunday morning. It's not time to sleep in late and pull the covers. Do it has some rain during the course of the night. It's a time to be in the place of God. When you want to win battles and have victories, you must stand in the name of the Most High God. You must get up, get yourself together, put your shoes on and get ready to move in the direction that God will lead you. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, we are dressing and coming down in our very own spaces. That's all right. We are doing it all for the honor and glory of the mighty God. We're making some sacrifice. We know it's church, so we get up and do what we have to do and dress ourselves. We are sacrificing. The time is come, coming when God will look down and he will say, there goes my daughter that was sacrificing. Though in their home they prepare themselves properly or my son for my service and I'm ready to bless them before great men now. I'm ready for the world to see that for the sacrifices they have made in the time where they were shut in, I'm ready to to openly bless them. This woman was openly being blessed and transformed by the word of God, by Jesus himself. Hear what the Bible says. Verse 1. I read from the Amplified. You have the KJV there, so you can follow with me. Bible says, So when the Lord learned that the Pharisees had been told that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John. Although Jesus himself was not baptizing, but his disciples were, he left Judea and returned again to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria. So he arrived at a Samaritan town called Sychar, near the tract of the land that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. And Jacob's well was there. So Jesus, tired as he was from his journey, sat down by the well. It was then about the sixth hour. It was about noontime. Hallelujah. The sixth hour was about to change this woman's life forever. How many of you know it is your season? Amen. That your life can be changed forever. Step into it now. Hallelujah. Step into your season and not away from it. Sometimes your season have come upon you to bring you out uh, and you step away rather than you step into your season. Uh. God wants you to step into your season. Uh. Bible says the woman from Samaria came to draw water and Jesus said to her, give me a drink. Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone off into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman asked him, how is it that you being a Jew ask me a drink? Samaritan woman for a drink for Jews have nothing to do with the Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew about God's gift of eternal life and who it is who says give me a drink, you would have asked him instead and he would have given you living water which is eternal life. She said to him sir, you have nothing to draw with, no bucket no rope and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Sometimes when the Lord is speaking, we think everything is literally natural. And sometimes we miss him because we see it as natural when it's spiritual. And the woman at the well was missing it here because uh, Jesus himself is the living water. And in the Old Testament, you will see it many a time uh, where they speak about uh, you know the Lord, they speak of him uh, as that water, water of life uh, and uh, sustainer, sustenance. Uh, in the natural life without water, it is advised medically that you should only go three days without water because it can do damage to the organs if you go more than that according to the person, the metabolism and different things uh, with how the body works. Uh, but uh, this uh, in this case, we are seeing here that Jesus is that living water, which is spiritual water. And even in our fasting that we have today, tomorrow and Tuesday, we go with our water 
and some of us we go light so it's like a partial fast uh, even though we are going on the water now child of god you need to know the times and the season you are in uh, i do not know what you have need of but it's time that you make some sacrifices uh, we are all called to sacrifice you cannot be doing the same thing uh, you know you will get the same results, but you're expecting and hoping to get different results. No, you have to put yourself in there and do it differently. This woman was about to do it differently because she encountered living water. She encountered Jesus, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. She encountered the Lord that was a part of creation. She encountered the Word, which is Christ himself. Hallelujah, somebody. And sometimes you really have to have an encounter. You see, when you have an encounter and experience with the Lord, nothing can beat that. Because you're listening to what everybody is saying. Nothing could have beat that woman's experience. She said to people, come and see a man who told me everything. She literally began evangelizing for the Lord. Hallelujah. She began carrying the gospel anywhere and everywhere. Why? She was astonished at the level of accuracy he brought out saying to her about her life and what position she was in. When the Lord comes in prophetically, it's like a wow factor, a wow moment. And this woman was like amazed. She was in awe like a who is this man? This man is a Jew. This man have no rope. He has no bucket. But he is saying he will give me living water that I will not taste again. And if you know who is asking, child of God, when you come in contact with Jesus, you will never be the same again. Amen. Hallelujah. You can never, ever, ever be the same again. How many of you know that? Amen. 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 So Bible says in verse 11, she said to him, Sir, Amen. Her response, right. Her response was, You have nothing to draw with. Amen. And we go down further at 12. Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well, and who used to drink from it himself, and his sons and his cattle also? Jesus answered her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water that I gave him will never be thirsty again. But the water that I gave him will become in him a spring of water satisfying his thirst for God welling up continually flowing bubbling within him to eternal life amen as verse 13 everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again that's of the well but whoever drinks of the water that I gave him will never be thirsty again but the water that I give him will become in him a spring of water satisfying is this for God. Are you satisfied in Jesus this morning? Mm. Hallelujah. Are you satisfied in the Lord today? Mm. Is that spring of living water welling up and bubbling, as the Bible says, from the inside? Bible says, unto eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I will not get thirsty, nor have to continually come all the way here to draw. At this, Jesus said, and look how interesting it is. Look how Jesus, like that, he will switch and say what he wanted to say. All along, he will come and he will just tell you that and was like, but he was just talking about living water. Now he's telling me, go, call your husband and come back conversation switch to give her living water he means i'm going to identify your sin and i'm going to forgive you if you want forgiveness but don't go back hallelujah the reason for pointing out the sin is so that she can be forgiven Amen. hallelujah he didn't play he didn't see it and she didn't play she didn't know what he was talking about you know sometimes when your sins are it is called out your play. You don't know what that person talking about. Anybody know what I speak? I've seen people who pretend 
they don't know and they're looking backwards in the pew, sideways in the pew. They're looking at somebody else because they believe it's not them. This woman did not try to hide her sins. This woman stood before the Lord. And let's hear what the Bible says. Go call your husband and come back. The woman answered, I do not have a husband. Now she was talking the truth. She did not have a husband. But she was connected to several people's husband. Amen. So she was a sinner in need of that Savior. She was a sinner in need of that living water. She did not lie. She didn't have her own husband. But she was borrowing as she go along the village. Hallelujah, somebody. And sometimes you can borrow the wrong thing. You don't borrow people's husband. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody on the live stream. You don't borrow people's wives. So you that are living double standard, God is our judge. And he will judge you. You think you have your health and your strength so you could take a, a little chance. God don't want you to risk a wrongdoing. He expect what he has given to us that we will use it wisely. Amen. The body that you like so much and you are preserving you know, God has given you that body so that you will bring honor and glory to him within your marriage or within that time until marriage. You keep yourself pure. You keep yourself holy. This woman, you know, in living her life, she was messed up. But we thank God for Jesus when we were messed up and we were lost and undone without God nor his son. The Lord saw us down in the valley and he sent us a lifesaver in Jesus. Hallelujah. Pull us up out of the valley. You know, one song says that, you know, on Christ the solid rock I stand. Another one said, he pulled me out of the miry clay and he set my feet on the rock to stay. Hallelujah. Giving God thanks on this Sunday because he pulled us out of the miry clay. It's like quicksand. You sink in. Hallelujah. But we thank God for J-E-S-U-S. -E Jesus in the morning. Jesus in the noon time. Jesus when the sun goes down. In my walking is Jesus. In my talking is Jesus. In my sleeping is Jesus. I understand that the God of my salvation, he cannot fail. I know that the God I serve, he is able to keep and he is able to deliver whatever come my way. In his name I am more than a conqueror because God has equipped me for purpose and he has given me that holy unction to tap into. The woman at the well. She had a good response. So innocent. Jesus said, go call your husband and come back. The woman answered, I do not have a husband. Wow. She really doesn't. She was innocent, but she knew she was a player. Hallelujah, somebody. She was a player. Meaning a slacker. Amen. Let's call it what it is, amen? In a time that we are seeing many people are leaving the earth because of this pandemic. Live your life set apart and holy. Don't think that you are invincible. You serve God in spirit and in truth and you do what is right in this time and in this season. Mm -hmm. We got to get radical. Everybody want a, you know, a, a, a gospel uh, that will fit into their needs. Uh, no, you have to get a gos the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, that will be outstanding to bring you into a place uh, that your needs, uh, yes, will be met. Uh, but also uh, your God uh, will shine in you through you uh, so that others will see the good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. Uh, but most time people want uh, a gospel that is suited to their likeness. Uh, whether you like it or not, the gospel is the gospel. Uh, and we got to hit it raw. we got to hit it hard. Uh, it is strong meat. Uh, and we got to send the message clear. Lest we be held accountable for not sending you uh, a clear message of who Jesus is. Amen. Amen. Uh, we must send a clear Amen. message. Uh, so hear what the Lord uh, said to her. The woman answered. I do not have a husband. Verse 17. Everybody seen that in your Bible? Yeah? I do not have a husband, the woman replied. And Jesus said, you're right. You have correctly said, I do not have a husband. For you have had five husbands, and the man you are now living with is not yours. Your husband. You have said this truthfully. As I said, the woman was speaking this truth. But look how many misters was in her life. People's husband. Amen. 
Amen, somebody. Amen. 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 In this pandemic, God forbid, if you were living a life like that, you shouldn't, especially if you're in the church and you're part of the body. But if you have been living a loose, cantankerous life, you need to stop it in the name of Jesus. And when we are doing wrong, nobody has to tell us. We know because we sneak. We sneak and get things done because of fetish desires. But God wants us to fix all the holes and the gaps in our life today. You don't have to be that type of sin, but this is what the woman was doing. She had, as Jesus said, you have correctly said, I don't have a husband. For you have had, and imagine, somebody, a prophet, or somebody that may not be able to see in the realm of the spirit. They would not have picked it up. But Jesus is Jesus. Hallelujah. Instantly, he will know whatever we are doing. Don't put yourself in a position where the Lord has to keep correcting you. You know what is right from wrong. Correct yourself. Fix the wrongs. Amen. Apply the word and be healed. It's like bam. Bible tells us, for well, you have had five husbands and the man you are now living with is not your husband. You have said it truthfully. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our fathers worship on this mountain. But you Jews say that the place where one ought to worship is in Jerusalem at the temple. Jesus replied, Woman, believe me, a time is coming when God's kingdom comes, when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans do not know what you worship. We Jews do know what we worship, for salvation is from the Jews. But a time is coming and is already here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit from the heart and the inner man. And in truth, for the Father seeks such people to be his worshipers. Bible says, John 4, 24, that I will usually quote, For God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is spirit, the source of life, yet invisible to mankind. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming. He who is called Christ, the anointed one. When that one comes, he will tell us everything we need to know. Now Jesus said to her, I will speak to you, am he, the Messiah. Child of God, Jesus speaks many a time and you don't recognize it is you. Purpose in your heart to have a relationship as you read and you study the word of God that you will know when Jesus shows up. The time and the season that you have. However limited it may be, give God your best. Whatever you are going through, God can't fail. And this woman, her encounter with Jesus has given her a victory. The moment that she spent in his presence gave her a victory. When Jesus tell her to go call her husband, she didn't give any inclination that she was with people's husband. She just said, I have no husband. So it looked innocent. Amen. It looked how innocent. But God, the God that we serve, people think you could trick him and you could fool him. Just as he saw the woman, how many thousand years ago, hundreds and thousand years ago, he still see you and I today. Mm -hmm. Every secret thought, watch me good. Every secret thought, every lying tongue, every feet that is quick to run into mischief, everything that we will do that is against the word of God, God is watching and he's taking note. You say it's a pandemic, what if I steal a little thing? Don't steal nothing. Because should the Lord call you in this pandemic, you want to make heaven, not hell, your home. Amen? And sometimes when you are having live stream from your home, people ring your doorbell. Amen? Hallelujah. 
Now, Bible is saying here, I will speak to you, I'm he, the Messiah. Just then, his disciples came, and they were surprised to find him talking with a woman. However, no one said, what are you asking about, or why are you talking to her? Then the woman left her water jar and went into the city and began telling the people. She began to evangelize. Now, a Jewish man, it is unethical and non-principled to be seen with a Samaritan woman. They were separated. They had their war among themselves. And they will not mix because their worship, their lifestyle, and as I said, it was a mix and a hated race. We are seeing, you know, even in the time that we live, is a mix and a hated time. Sometimes when we have elections, different things we are seeing in our nation. And, you know, people get so angry, they don't like one another because of a race. But I thank God for grace because His grace has opened us up to love one another. Our brother, our sister, irregardless of the race, we thank God because of God's grace. We can love one another. Amen. Amen. So if we're in the church, we are not supposed to be racial. It is not of God. True. Grace. Because God, through Jesus Christ, extended grace to this woman. Amen. So that her race will no longer be a factor. Hallelujah. Amen. But she was one now that can be drafted in or grafted into the vine of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as a Gentile woman. We are Gentiles once you are not a Jew. So today we are thankful to God. And you notice something, the Lord did not condemn her, but the Lord gave her forgiveness and he, you know, he reached out to her in love. Now, child of God, many men can do that type of witnessing because the lady coming from a background that is such, you may fall into error. Amen, Pastor? Mm -hmm. So you have to know sometimes what is your limit. I've heard people say, I can minister to anybody. And I've seen them fall because when it comes to this type of testing, they can't handle it. Yeah. You have to be sanctified and set apart to be able to release this word. Hallelujah. And to be able to not fall into sin because Satan is cunning and he will set you up. You say, I'm going to minister to somebody. She needs help. Let God put it in her spirit, in your spirit, uh, who you should help. Uh, and you don't decipher who you should uh, because you can go into the lion's mouth. Sure. Amen. Amen. Coming down home as we close. I trust the Lord that you are getting clarity and enjoying the message because uh, I don't like to buff and to butter it up. Uh, I like it to be raw and plain so that you can receive the word of God. Bible says as you're coming down, yeah, verse 13, verse 29, come see a man who told me all the things that I have done. Can this be the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed? Remember Jesus told her who he was. So the people left the city and were coming to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging Jesus to have a meal, saying, Rabbi, teacher, eat. But he told them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said, to one another, Jesus spoke so many parables uh, that the disciples was at times worn out. Uh, he spoke a lot in parables. Uh, so even in his word today, we have those same parables. Uh, and the mystery of God is for us and not hidden from us. Uh, as we begin, uh, you know, to be in that place of oneness with him uh, and in that place of loving uh, and studying the word, it is revealed clearly unto us what he is saying. Uh, because I've seen so many times that they misunderstood uh, the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, so if the disciples who walk with him would have misunderstood uh, many a times that uh, Jesus had to clear it up, uh, what about us who walk today? We at times may have some challenges but you go back to the Lord uh, like the disciples and say, Lord, what did you mean? Uh, if you don't understand, you go back to the Lord. You don't encourage, uh, you know, false teachers uh, and yeah. false prophets to put a word in you that will sink you. Uh, you want the word that will lift you, uh, that will cause you to come higher and not drown, go lower. Amen. Yeah. God wants us to come to him uh, in times where we are uncertain. Uh, as we come with childlike faith and genuine, uh, the Lord will elevate us. Uh, and you know, yesterday in doing a little um, a Zoom class, you know, with uh, some of the ministers, and one of the things 
that the ministers were saying God didn't call us because of our perfection with character but he called us because the gift the calling and the gift is without repentance and when we look at the Apostle Paul, he was not a man of character because he was stoning. He was a part uh, of killing the Christians uh, so that, uh, you know, the work of God will not continue. So when God calls you, uh, he will equip you. You could be as bad as whatever it is. You could be clarify yourself as the worst sinner. When God washes you with the blood of Jesus Christ and he saved your dying soul, the wind of change comes into your life and now character will be seen. As character, you build character from the word of God and you apply daily, it will elevate you in a place where God can trust you and God can promote you. Your promotion will come with your elevation of Amen. character. As you walk in character, this woman now had an opportunity to walk uh, in character. She was outside of character before meeting Jesus. Uh, listen, when when you come in contact with Jesus, it's a fire. It's a transformation. Uh, it's a power. It's a power that you cannot, uh, you cannot speak of, but you can only express it because there is so much joy from the inside. Uh, knowing that what you couldn't contain. Uh, I'm sure the woman didn't want to have five people's husband. Uh, but you know what? Uh, with the flesh, she couldn't help herself, whatever her needs and whatever was going on in her life. Uh, but when Jesus came, that desire was cut as she accepted accepted him hallelujah your desires for the wrong thing will cut as you accept the lord fully she did not accept it impartially but fully hallelujah so she had no space for wrongdoing no tears for wrongdoing again as living water is here do you not say it is still four months until the harvest come look i say to you raise your eyes and look at the fields and see they are white for harvest now, child of God, already the reaper is re receiving his wages and he's gathering fruit for eternal life. So that he who plants and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this case, the saying is true, one person sows and another reap. Sent you to reap a crop for which you have not worked. Others have worked and you have been privileged to reap the results of their work. Child of God. Just verse 39, now many Samaritans from that city believe in him and trusted him as savior because of what the woman said when she testified. He told me all the things that I have done. So when the Samaritans came to Jesus, they asked him to remain with them and he stayed there two days. Though they were of a different race, the Lord introduced grace, amen. amen. He stayed with them two days. As I said, read the history. The Samaritans and Jews, no relationship. True. They were hated. But Jesus showed them his open love. Basically, whosoever will may come. I have come unto my own and they receive me not. And I'm sharing what I have. Uh, that you can come boldly before the throne of grace uh, and be a true worshiper. As he said, he's calling true worshipers. Uh, true worshipers. Uh, the woman was an evangelist. She ran out and she won people into the kingdom. Bible says she went into the city. Hallelujah. She went into the city and she told people of what the Messiah said to her. She told people of what he said uh, and she was not ashamed. True. Amen. Amen. You just highlight that again there. Bible says now when some are now many Samaritans from that city believe in him, that's verse 39, and trusted him as Savior because of what the woman said when she testified. He told me all the things that I have done. She was not hiding because she knew she was a sinner and she knew she had received a transformation from the God above. The connection was alive. Hallelujah. So we give God the praise, the honor, and the glory on this day. Even uh, as we know that our Father, He's amazing, He's marvelous, and He's wonderful. Uh, so child of God, uh, in all of your doing today, remember, in this time and in this season, don't do any wrong and say, I got messed up during the pandemic. No. Make a choice to separate yourself. Amen? 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 Amen. Amen.
it is important that we understand uh, just a little history. The woman, a member of a mixed race, she was known to be living in sin in the city and was in a public place. From what we understand, no respectable Jewish man would talk to a woman under such circumstances, but Jesus, he did. The good news is for every person, no matter what his or her race, social position, or past sins. We must be prepared to share this good news at any time and in any place. Jesus crossed and broke all barriers to share the good news with her. And we who follow him must do likewise. God will make opportunities for us to share the good news with others. Will you do the same? Will you carry the gospel, you know, fearlessly? Or will you be fearful of who that individual is? Or will you judge that person because of their sin and say, they don't want Jesus, they have their own life? You know, sometimes we can say that and we make a judgment. This time the woman was ready for change. Mm -hmm. The change was ripe and the woman just wanted help. But she couldn't do it on her own. And sometimes God is going to set you up with somebody so that you can pull pull them out. Be ready to pull out somebody who is in need. Amen. When you speak about the living water in the Old Testament, many will speak of thirsting after God as one who thirsts after water. In Psalms 42 verse 1, you will see it in Isaiah 55 verse 1, and you have other scriptures. God is called the fountain of life and the fountain of living water. We see in Jeremiah 17 13. So, child of God, is the fountain of living water. I thank God for the fountain of living water today. I thank God for Jesus, King of kings and Lord of lords. I trust the Lord that you receive something from the word on this Sunday morning. We are grateful to our Father. Let's pray. Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 We had some difficulties and some technical interference at the beginning of the live stream but we thank god it's cleared up it's well uh, in the name of jesus christ of nazareth we thank you for you know bearing with us because that's how it is in this time and in this season uh, and we just want to uh, bless you today even as it's our fast uh, we are thankful that uh, you know this next three days we really want to spend quality time with god and remember, the curfew begins at 7 p.m., so be in your homes by 6, 6.30 p.m. Amen. Those that may forget and want to do whatever it is and come out later, the curfew begins at 6 p.m. from tonight, uh, 7 p.m. from tonight. So take account those who say, I don't like to watch the news. There's no good news. Whether the news good or bad, we have to pray and we have to do what we have to do. Amen. So I don't want them to catch you outside, so therefore you should be in your home by 6.30 amen somebody and uh, you know today normally what we will do is bless the oils and we will bless the seeds uh, and do dedication of baby but we are doing everything virtual at this point in time uh, so whatever seeds or whatever um, seeds or tithes that you may have I will just do it on a virtual blessing as well uh, and you can have it and in times and season as we are open or whatever arrangement as the Lord need we will take it further so you have your seed and you want to hold it in your hand. I will pronounce the blessing over it. Name the seed and claim the victory in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It's a time and a season that, you know, we're still sowing and we're still giving into the kingdom. We're still blessing others as the Lord have blessed us. And we're still thankful. We continue to be thankful. We're not complaining. We're just giving praise. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for your people. As they will hold their seed in their hands or their tithes, I declare the blessings of the Lord upon both. The blessings of the Lord which make it rich and add no sorrow. Father, I thank Thank you for every victory that they have procured even through their giving uh, Lord to be a blessing to your house so that there will be meat in your house uh, and also to keep the doors open uh, so that we are facilitated until that time again where we can come uh, and join in sweet fellowship uh, we thank you and we pronounce a blessing uh, we declare over every need that, that is seen, seen here today uh, 
Father, it is met. Uh, as they hold the seed in their hand, uh, I cancel every form of sickness, uh, every form of influence from the kingdom of darkness to cause their mindset to shift uh, where they will want to become uh, in such a place, Father God, of isolation uh, or a place of a rebel because of the stress and distress. Uh, I cancel today and I declare the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, Father, for those that are seeking healing, uh, I decree and declare healing. Those that are tested positive, uh, I declare your healing balm uh, will rest you even as they apply. Uh, Father God, themselves with whatever medication and rest that is necessary, I'm declaring, Father God, that their bodies are healing at this point in time, uh, and we are thanking you for victories. Uh, for those mighty God that are saying even today, Lord, that they may be in quarantine, and uh, it's a time that is affecting them where family and loved ones are in the hospital and separated and can't connect. Father, I declare your strength. Uh, I declare your comfort. I declare your peace that passes all understanding. Uh, I say, God, intervene in this time and in this season. Uh, mighty God, even as you have done it in time past, continue, uh, Lord, to do uh, what no other God can do. Uh, Father, we pronounce the blessing uh, and we declare strength for your people. We declare the anointing that breaks the yoke. Uh, as Father God set them apart, uh, that even in this time and in this season, uh, that they will grow, they will glow, and they will overflow uh, in the midst of all that is taking place, that they will not, Father, become stagnant. Uh, but they will continue to advance in the kingdom of righteousness. Uh, we thank you, God, for opening doors uh, that those that didn't have jobs, that they are going out to work. Uh, and we continue to say thanks for the others that are following suit in the name of Jesus, uh, where their name shall be called out. Uh, Father, we are giving you the praise, the honor, and the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, we continue to say thank you with a grateful heart. Uh, for we know, mighty God, that there is no other way and no other hope. And we are thankful. We bless your people and we bless their seeds. We cover them under your precious blood. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Father, for those that are saying, uh, you know, in this time and in this season, it has been difficult uh, with finances, uh, that nothing is being, no income is being generated because of the mandatory lockdown. Uh, we pray for provision. Uh, we pray, mighty God, that every day that they will have something before them to eat, uh, Father God, and they will be able to function uh, even in their life without complaining. Uh, but Lord, it shall be their testimony of how you brought them out. Uh, I declare testimony even uh, as you walk into the space of the woman at the well. Uh, I'm declaring you're going to walk into their very space, uh, Father, and change their situation. Uh, I declare turn it around with the connection, uh, even as the fountain of water the living water they connect with uh, I pronounce the blessing uh, and I thank you mighty God uh, that sin will not have dominion uh, in this season uh, that people will not yield to sin I cancel every desire for sinful things and I declare the blood of Jesus uh, and the name of Jesus above all else uh, I bless your people and I thank you for this in Jesus mighty name Amen and amen. So saints, we will see you on Thursday evening and you know we have our membership co-members at Zoom on, Tuesday, on Monday and Tuesday studies from the word of God with respect to the fast, just connecting and praying. Bible tells us to pray one for another. Bible tells us to fellowship one with another. This time we are only fellowshipping virtually. Amen. Via technology, we are not in anybody's spaces. And we are thankful that we can still fellowship. So the Lord bless you. I love you with the love of the Lord. Stay strong. Stay covered. Stay away from people. Stay away from crowds. Do what you have to do in this time. Giving God the honor. Giving God the glory. And we continue to pray for your safety. For the frontliners. For the essential workers. And for those of us that would have to go out and get stuff up. We do it in a quick time and we come coming back. Amen. So giving God all praise. We will see you on Thursday evening. Our congregational day of fasting. But we continue today on Monday and on Tuesday. Amen. The Lord bless you. We love you with the love of the Lord. We are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. We thank God for you. And even as we continue in the faith, may you be blessed.
and may you be strengthened. We thank God for all that took the time to be a part of today's live stream. God bless you. Much love and stay strong as they take us out with a song in Jesus' name. Oh, yeah.